Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I don't know who's here. I think there's like three people here. I'm not sure I'm doing this by myself today. Um, looks like Phoebe is on an errand and we won't be able to, um, yeah, she'll be maybe joining us in a little bit. So I'm hoping that, that I have some fun today. We'll just, uh, yeah, check out. I don't see any. I've got to set this up real quick since I am by myself. I do want to make sure if I see anybody, uh, you can say hello. <laughs> if I can try to respond to you, it would be great if I can respond in a real time. But we have lots in store, lots of things to do to show. And I'm hoping that we'll have some fun. So today's Friday. And you know how much I love origami. And so I'm just going to go ahead and let this run through. And uh, if there's anybody there, say hello. I would love to uh, have you um, say hello. And I can't see you. So there's eight people here according to what I see. So hello, people, <laughs> eight or nine. And uh, I'm going to get started. And hopefully it all runs smoothly. So we have... As you know, Yasutomo has a lot of origami designs, and they keep growing, by the way. And origami, if you know me for a long time, you know that origami is one is really my second. I don't know; it's probably equal to watercolor. Um, I kind of like origami for the calming feeling that it gives me, and the fun, and the challenge, the mental challenge. There's a lot of things: the uh, eye-hand coordination. And at my age, you know, the more I keep this, uh, oh, great, great. So Beth is here. I'm so glad <laughs> I see that you're watching. Awesome. So we've got these origami papers that Yasu Toma cares. This is just part of the collection. I'm just going to show you just a little part of it. And I'm going to show you what you can do with it. You know, when you do a lot of folding, like I do, I kind of have a bunch of models that I save, especially if they're flat models. I just put them in a basket and I kind of I think about instead of just you know tossing them what do you do with origami after you fold it well let's make some cards or let's let me get you inspired to make some cards and we'll go from there there's so many things that you can do with with the with the flat origami models and you've seen me fold these before I've got some of these are on my YouTube channel some of these uh, this little tato was most recently put up little paper dress and coat all these are pretty much available on the internet, these folds. There's all kinds, little, little birds, trees, you know, just possibilities are crazy. So my job today is to hopefully inspire you to incorporate your folding into some, into greeting cards or mixed media or collage or even on an art journal. And I'm going to kind of go through, I wish I could see anyone typing anything. They can't today. That's not happening. Oh, well. <laughs> as best as I, I wanted to, so I'm just going to have to apologize in advance if you have any questions. I won't be able to answer them right now, but we, we either Phoebe or I will go back into the uh, video and we'll answer the questions in the comments. So comments are welcome. I just won't be able to answer questions um, until afterwards. So anyway, let's get started. So I've got this pile of paper, or not paper, I've got a pile of paper up here. And I've got some cards I laid out that I made this week just to kind of kind of give you an overview of what you can do. So this one I just finished today. I love this. I took some a watercolor card. It's just a Strathmore greeting card, watercolor greeting card, and I laid it down and I made watercolor leaves and I splattered a little bit and did my writing on it. And then I added the little origami element. So that's what's that's kind of the thing I want you to be inspired to do. So if you get some origami folds that are flat, like here's a little heart, just like that one, that would be a fun one too. You can make a series or sets of cards that would be really fun. Um, so this is a very simple fold. So these are the Strathmore greeting cards. They're watercolor greeting cards. So here's one that I did with that. This is the one I did a little while ago. And I just watercolored and I just kind of did the stem and the in the leaves, which is 
hardest part is a flower, right? When you're watercoloring. So I just splatter just to give the uh, impression of watercolor flowers. And I kind of have it going on the back as well. And, and then I made this thing earlier out of some paper that I get to share with you later. This is uh, going to be coming out in the first of the year. It is going to be painted papers that I designed. And actually they're just jelly printed papers, uh, mixed media papers that we're turning into origami paper. And I'll share with the, that in a minute. But anyway, uh, this is a little piece that I did this, a little Tato. And this is for a friend. And I just made a little, kind of a little card inside. And this little piece, I all I need to do is kind of place it on and it's already done. I've got my card done. So I could use uh, either, I can use glue, which I'm going to do on this one. Just put some glue on the car on the back of this piece. Just put a little white glue. You can use double stick tape, whatever you've got in your stash. You just want to make sure it's lining there we go, up like this. And I'm just going to put it on my on my card. Now I have a finished interactive kind of fun little card that can be um, given, you know, for any occasion, but this one is going to be a get well card, a uh, feel better soon card. But then we'll have to figure out a way to tell people to open it because that's the message is here, which I think is really fun. And then you could put a little something down here too. Like that is one very simple way to make a really fun card. You can do these advanced, like just make little leaves and stems make a whole bunch of them and then just put some flat models on top, you know, the same size where you can put the hearts. These look really good. Um, you no, know, so that's an idea for you to do that. That's one. And card number one is out of the way already. already. Now, number two <clears throat> is this, uh, I have this really fun, um, no, this is a model actually that's in my book and I'm going to tell you about my book because I have to give you a little plug while I'm here. This little book called Origami Card Craft. I wrote this uh, many years ago with a different last name, as you can see. Um, but this is actually really, this has a lot of models in here that are great for greeting cards. And this little uh, pinwheel is in there. So the pinwheels, if you need to find pinwheels on the internet, you can find pinwheels that you could fold, no problem. So let me just show you how I made this really quick. I'm using a screw punch, and if you don't know what that is, it's really handy. Um, that's what someone used to carry these years ago. They don't anymore, but they are available. You can buy them in places. Oh, whoops, I just took this one apart. <laughs> now I'm giving away the secret. All right, so let me show you how it was made. So easy. I just noticed that I, um, it's got a little, basically I punched a hole into the piece and there we go and i just put the piece through like a little brad one of these little cute little brads small little tiny thing and i'm putting it through i uh, punched the hole through both sides and i'm just gonna put it like this so there it is now we've got a spin you know kind of nice interactive card and you don't need to cover that up, but if you want to, you can put a piece of paper over it to kind of conceal that a little bit. That's that's another idea. So basically, you're just going to fold the, the model, and then I used a little hole punch with our gold foil paper, which we have, and uh, I punched a hole like this, and I'll just show you. You punch through the whole card. Let me find the little piece that I had. There we go. There it is. Okay, this is the one I was going to show you. So this one I did actually ahead of time today, and I splattered, made a little, just used a straight line and some watercolor. Really simple, simple, just splattered it across with some watercolor. And all I need to do is take my little something underneath to keep myself from putting a hole in my desk. And I'm just going to find the center, kind of where I want that to be, where I want that to live, which is right here. And I'm just going to take that hole punch and, I, and whatever you have, if you've got, this is nice to have. If you have one of these, um, if you don't, just use a hole punch, a long reach hole punch, or an awl, something like that, that you can um, use. And this piece, oh, I see what happened. This is one of those little brads and it broke. So um, I just use a little brad. If you don't have a little brad, you could put something else through, but that's it. That's the card. Simple, simple. I guess. This one's broken and I don't have one close by, so I can't 
put it together, but you get the idea. Um, and I love this. I left a little space if I want to put a little greeting here, or I can just leave it alone. It's very fun on its own. So there's an idea for a card there. And I have an idea. Oh, this one. I wanted to show you this one because this one is so cute with a little flat folded iris. And we have all these videos. So, you know, the models for most of these, all these things here, the dress, the coat, this, um, in most of the models that I'm showing today, those are all, all on the Yasutomo channel, or they will be soon. They're up there unlisted right now, but they're going to be uh, live soon. And the only one that's not on there on the is my, my YouTube channel, uh, Karen Elaine YouTube channel. This is Tato is on my channel. I think it may be on Yasutomo's channel too. It's possible. So I just wanted to, to clarify, if you're looking for models, flat models, go right over and head on over in a day or so, uh, those the videos will be available. So this one, I just took some watercolor, made a background, made like a sky, glued my little iris on top, and stamped a little saying. And there you go. You've got a, a little birthday card, or for whatever occasion it is. And this one, I had fun. I made this one last night. <laughs> now this dress, I love doing. As you can see, I love making making these dresses it's a coat and a dress and i noticed that you know the coat um you know the dress slips in, in and out of the of the coat so i thought what a fun idea let's take this and make something interactive so you take this dress and you take it off the coat stuck on to the card and then i have a little saying which you've seen me do um in the right on the back so that's kind of a fun idea to take your cards and make them kind of interactive rather than just something that, you know, just from face value, something fun. You might even want to put, take off your dress. I don't know, <laughs> something so that people will know. Of course, it would probably slide out naturally anyway, but so there it is. That's an idea too. And oh, this card is a very common card size. So you'll know these, this is a, a half sheet of eight by, basically it's uh, 11 inches by Oh boy, four and a quarter. Yeah, four and a quarter by 11. So basically it's a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock cut in half and then folded again in half. And that's, a, uh, I believe it in a four size, I might be wrong, but it's a pretty common size to um, use. And I like the five by seven bit better because I have more room to do artwork. This one's really sweet, more of an announcement size. And this one is a really nice uh, size just to have more room and to write a bigger message inside. So that uh, same thing with this one, I just did a background this time um, on my card. It's a watercolor greeting card. I masked off the edges, did a wash of watercolor and put a little couple of little embellishments, including the, the little folded dress. And now I've got a little fun little thing like like a party invitation or just it's a party life is a party I guess <laughs> if we want it to be right so there's another idea and this is the one I wanted I think I showed this on our Instagram I just love this so this one is a flower that I painted very loosely ahead of time and splattered but not really on both sides and again there's a message inside which is just makes it more fun just unusual and fun and that's why I like combining origami with with uh, my watercolors and other stuff. Now, this is something I've been doing in a class. Megan Quinlan Studio has a class hosted on Willow Wanders. It's a paper doll course, mm -hmm. comprehensive paper doll. And in the class, she's dressing uh, dolls with, you know, with all kinds of things. But I thought, why not dress my uh, dolls with origami dresses, right? The same thing, these are the same size dresses. So you could have a paper doll thing, change the clothes out. And this could be on a card too. I think this would be really gorgeous on a card. It might be too tall to put on the five by seven, but maybe she'll fit just perfectly. She'll have a little overhang, but not much. So she'll fit perfect. And that would be a really nice card for, and you could put a background, uh, some maybe balloons or whatever you want to do. But yes, so you could just save all your origami. Let's call these origami focal points. <laughs> They're ready to go to make focal points on your reading cards or whatever you've got going. Um, there's other little ideas I wanted to share with you. I'm going to put this one aside. 
Um, a few months ago, I did a little class on with Etcher. It's an art materials. They have an Etcher studio, it's called. And I made these really interesting meditative art pieces. And it was kind of an experience to be able to have all these. This is made out of rice paper, the Yasutomo's six six H pad. And it's been these are the jelly printed papers or they've been print, you know, hand painted. Plus these are the watercolors that I threw away and made little weavings out of. Um, this is the flat fold that is in we'll have this it's on our website. This is a little flat fold, which is a really great for putting on journals, putting on cards and making just as a piece itself. And it has a little it becomes like a little envelope. And if you want to add even more, you can just make a totally immersive uh, experience for a card with somebody who's receiving a card. Um, it's, you could put a gift card inside, you could put money and a little surprise in there. And it just makes for a really nice greeting. Now this could be uh, put on like, let's say you put this on a card. I'm gonna just show you an idea that I would do. If I put this on a card like this, I would glue just this back part on only this, and then I can slide the, the box could slide freely um, in an up and down in the card. I think that would be really cool. So you'd have to have like that the belt or the belly band would be stuck to the card and then the box would slide in and out Wouldn't that, that would be really cool. So that's just an idea for you. And this was another one I thought was really pretty just added some watercolor pieces on top of the box. And then inside there's a little more thematic theme here. It's about the ocean. And this is some watercolor, ocean watercolors that I had done and cut up. So really don't throw away your watercolors that you don't like because you can always use them to um, embellish your your pieces, your folded pieces and everything else. Now the other thing I want to share with you is. Do you remember iris folding? I, I don't know if it's something that you did in the past, but I've been kind of going back to it this week because I just wanted to, I just love it. It's just so fun and so easy. Now these pieces are made with our watercolor series uh, origami papers. And these are papers that I designed and I'm just gonna show you the packages so you know because they're really interesting. They have double side, I gotta pull these out. They're in the pile here somewhere. <laughs> I know it. These are, but that's not it. Anyway, you've probably seen them before, but if you haven't, they're um, beautiful papers and they're very soft in color. Um, instead of those classic colors like this, these are our classic designs that we've had for years and years. Nice bright colors, saturated colors, and we've got pinks and you know very basic colors we have some very folk art designs which i love um this is a nice paper that kind of has a rice paper feel it has a, it's called yuzen and it's a sort of a, a textured paper and it's really beautiful and we've had this paper it's a classic these also are the same kind and we have a limited supply of these uh these kind of aurora mar marble and aurora wave those are going to be gone once the supply is out. So if you haven't gotten them yet, um, get them because <laughs> they won't last. And it's not, it's just the manufacturer doesn't make them anymore. So we can't get these, but these are beautiful for making little focal points, kind of like inside the iris fold, which I'm going to show you how to do today. And I'm trying to find the, I'm getting, trying to find the paper. There they are. <laughs> so this is the series that I um, did these cards with. And this is the watercolor leaves, doodle dots, and dancing cats. These are made from my watercolor sketches. In fact, I don't, it's kind of hard to see there, but just from sketching, you know, doodling with watercolor, and these were put into a pattern. So we were able to come up with some fun little designs, and they're double sided. So that's what I love about the double sided uh, feature is that I was able to make these cards with this beautiful coordinating color. So you don't have to think about the design, you just do it. It's, you've got these beautiful colors that go together, which is really nice. So that's these, and they, there's three so far. And then these, which you probably have seen before, because if you've been around Yostomo, you've got to have these. It's the Kaleidoscope series. 
and these make fantastic um, iris folds. And I'm going to show you uh, the one I'm going to make today is made from this package, the 40, what's the number on this one? 4527. It's got a very um, kimono designs, very Asian color way. So it's really, really nice, especially for iris holding because it's a very traditional looking um, design. So, and I also use the craft paper. I have to show you that too. Craft. Um, but really, got to have all the origami patterns because <laughs> they really are beautiful. And the reason I like craft, and this is the craft, I use the craft red and the craft white to, to finish this one off. And this paper is gorgeous. It's got craft paper on one side and color on the other, and it's a softer, more muted tones than these. So it's just kind of nice to have combinations of stuff. So I'm going to show you. And I think today's live is going to go a little faster. Yeah, I'll probably uh, stop a little sooner just because I'm going really fast. And I know it's only 20 minutes in and I'm going to go through everything. Um, and I, if I could converse with you and answer questions, that would be great. I'm going to give it one more little, see if I can see. And I see there's 22 of you there. So hello, welcome to everyone that's come in. And uh, really glad you're here. I'm just going to see if I can see the people <laughs> see you so I can talk to you. Um, no, I don't see it. Rats. But that's all right. Okay. No, it's not all right. I want to see the comments. If there's any comments. If you, you have, oh, well, Phoebe, I wish you were here. <laughs> so it's nice to have a person on the other end that can tell you what's happening. So, but anyway, let's get excited about this. Let me tell you about Iris Fulton. So iris folding, if you go on the internet, you're going to find all these little patterns. Okay, I found years ago, these, this little round set of patterns, um, this fits my hole punch. It's one of those, um, I think it's a Martha Stewart hole punch. It's a two and a quarter inch circle. And I'm able to cut a circle that fits these perfectly. Now, when you go onto the iris folding and you look around, you'll see there's easy and more difficult, which doesn't mean they're difficult. They just take more time. You have to have more strips of paper and it just takes a little more. But what I've done is I've mounted my template onto my backing of my origami papers. All these origami papers, just so you can see, have a little cardboard bag. So I love using, I don't like throwing away the plastic, but there's always a cardboard back inside the package, which is, Nice. Don't throw those away. They make good little backings for lots of things. So what I did was I mounted the, the pattern onto that. And one thing I forgot to get, and you want when you're doing this, you need two different types of tape. You're going to need a, a washi tape that's not, you know, low tack. You don't want something that's going to tear your template. And you're going to want your hole cut out. And if you can, if you don't have a hole like a round, you can do square, any any shape. But squares or, or circles are perfect. You also need some sticky tape, like regular scotch tape. And you'll need the washi tape. So I'm going to start. And I'm going to do one that's not too hard, because I don't want to spend too much time boring you with this part. But I'm going to just put. My card, if I had a right side and a wrong side, which I see in this paper, I do. I, this is actually Claire Fontaine. Um, it's a denim blue cardstock, and it comes in a really sh small little pack, and it's just really cool. So I can see there's a wrong side and a right side. So this is the right side. I'm putting the right side down on my um, template, and I'm going to just take a little bit of tape. I'm just going to tack it down just so it won't go anywhere. Okay, just a little bit like that. That's all I need. And I can take it anywhere and do this. And now I'm going to just, I've got my pieces all cut up. So what I did was I cut one inch strips or a little less than one inch um, strips of my paper. And I'm going to divide them into groups. So I've got my red craft. This is the craft red. And I've got white, I've got black, not just plain black origami paper. I'm just going to divide these into little just sections. Yeah. 
whoops, they're stuck. All right, so and what I did was I folded them in half lengthwise. So if you do this, just you know, fold them in half, fold them in half ahead of time, long wise. So you have all these long strips, and just divide them by pattern. So I've got my design ones of the uh, kaleidoscope paper. So I've got the one, I've got several strips. You don't need a lot, but I'm just I made more than I needed probably, but that's fine because you can make more than one card. All right, just trying to separate these. They all got bunched together. And you really kind of want to do this in a sequence. So if I do this, if I start with my, let's say my design paper first, so I'm going to kind of do this in a way that's not, <laughs> it makes sense to me. All right, I'm going to move, I'm going to put the, that is going to be the first. Then I'm going to go number two will be the white. So I'll just put that little white pile together. And then red will be next. And then black will follow. That'll be last. I'm just organizing them so by color. Okay, there we go. All done. All right, now I'm going to start doing it. So I'm hoping that you can see that. I think it's lined up. So now what I need to do is so easy is you take your first pattern. And if you have a pair of scissors, you might need a pair of scissors to just trim off the thing. I'm just going to bring slide up that a little bit higher so you can see it better. There he goes. And I'm just going to take this and I'm going to take this over the one. Now I notice this one, see that number one there? It goes in sequence. One, two, three, four. So the color one is the pattern. Color two is the white. It just basically goes like that. Now I notice that this is a little bit thick. It's thicker than, wider than my strip I'm seeing. So I have a way that I can fix that. I can actually just kind of fold a little bit more of the paper to make it a little wider. And what we want is the, we want the y, the folded side always to go in. So I'm going to just lay this down. Oops, there we go. It's, I'm laying it down and I want it to go over that circle just a little bit. I'm going to trim it off right there just so it doesn't stick out farther than my um, card. Now I'm going to take a little bit of tape. It's not much. You don't need a lot. And this is that super sticky scotch tape. So it's really sticky. Okay. It's really crazy sticky. And I'm just taking a little tiny piece off. And it gets messy. This thing's going to get messy, but it's going to look good when I'm done. All right, I'm just going to put a little piece of tape down. First piece is done. And I'm going to take the second color, the white. And I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to have to refold it. It looks like the same thing. I won't have to do this to all of it, but this one I need to do that because I just realized I folded the strips just a little too thin. And that first layer is a bit, a bit wide. So I'm just making it wide enough to cover from this line to cover, to go past the card. I'm just going to trim it. I don't have to do it perfectly just to make sure it's covered. And I'll just take a little piece of tape and lay this over that right to line up with the line, the number two line. Some of them are done in letters, some are done with numbers. It doesn't matter, but it's nice to have organization so you know which colors are going to go next. Now, there's the red piece. I have to do the same thing, make it wider. I think unless I have a wider one here, that one might be wide enough. Yes. Okay, so now I'm going to lay this down right so that the folded edge it goes in. And I'm just going to trim it. Maybe I'll just trim this little angle so that it kind of goes better. There we are. And maybe trim it beforehand before I lay it down. And then same thing, take a piece of tape. In a little bit, I've got probably too much, but that's okay. And now I'm just going to lay this on. And it's going to look really messy for a while. I'm going to do the last color, which is black. I'm going to try to get a wide piece if I can. Looks like I have to do the same thing. Fold it just a little bit wider. And then lay it down on my page or my card and do it. And these can be as detailed or, or as complex or as simple as you can make it. You could even do like a crazy quilt thing where you just lay the paper down every which way. And it's still going to look cool. You don't, it doesn't have to be a pattern. If you don't have a template, you can certainly just go crazy and have just make it 
random. And those are also really cool. I'm just going to trim that so it doesn't go out exceed the card. So that's my first layer. Now it's going to go faster. I have to always start with my the first color. So I'm just going to take my strip and lay it right on. This is my fifth color. I'm just going to lay it down to lay right on top of that. I should have put my tape beforehand. <laughs> there we go. And that dispenser is not helping me much. I'm just going to lay it down, trim. As long as it goes past the thing, past this, don't want it to go inside the ap aperture or the window. I'm going to go white next. And just kind of guess the length of it. Trim. And this will go fast because I have kind of a very simple uh, pattern there. Once you get into the swing of these, you can just make a bunch of them. And they're just so fun. And they, I like the tactile, quilty feeling, almost fabric feeling that they have. Next one is red. And just kind of trim it to the length you think it's going to need. And get your tape, like a small piece, and lay it down. Okay, this would look really good with pattern paper too, like like the collage paper. I'll show you in a little bit. I think this would look beautiful. And then I'm just going to take my black paper and lay it down, right? Just to line up folded side going towards the center, the folded edge always to the center. And I can trim and just proceed. And I want you to see how magical this looks. This looks look kind of wide. I might have to take that wide piece that I had started. There it is and use that because it is wide. And I want to make sure it's the folded edge. If it's not the folded edge, it won't look as nice. There we go. Cover, lay it on there and do it. Like that. Now again, starting over with these pieces. And you can decide what side you want to show um, a little bit. If you have certain patterns that you like, more colors you like, just kind of look at that side and, and see that it, it's showing on the uh, on the iris. All right, here we go. I'm going to lay this down and I only have a few more pieces to put on there and then I'll be able to reveal, show you the actual finished piece, which is so pretty. I'm going to take another piece of white. There we go. And I'm going to trim that. As I close in, it's like an aperture of a camera. I, some of you must have done iris folding at some point. It was such a the rage few years ago and you know things get recycled things make resurgences so we're going to make an iris folding resurgence now you'll see it wants to pop up and if that happens just tape put some more tape down to tame that thing let's see what that and there you go. maybe that so it won't flip up and if you need to tape more just as long as you don't go inside the oh, inside you'll be fine I'm going to do red next. Take a little piece of red. We're closing in. And I'm going to just put it right over it. Folded side in always. And then like put your little tape taped piece so it doesn't go over the uh, to the inside. And the black is right here. This goes fast because I've got kind of a not very complex. Uh, this is not a complex design and I do see some tape that wants to meander and I don't want that to be in my design so I'm going to fold it back or I should trim it or something and I don't want that in my design so I'm just getting rid of that there we go and then I'm going to go ahead and put this on like that and only four more and then we're getting there I'm almost there and it's so much fun. The best part is what is the reveal. So you'll see what that looks like very, very soon. Less than a minute, probably. And who, everyone, welcome. Whoever's here, I wish I could read, say hello to everybody, but know that you, you know that you're here. Just welcome, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Phoebe couldn't be with us today. She had an errand to do. And if she's, she may have, I don't know if she's come or not. <laughs> She's not in this meeting, but if she's watching from somewhere, I hope that she enjoys that too. So I'm doing, oh, did I do white? Yep, that, the next color was white. 
Okay, and then the next color is red. And then we'll black and then we'll finish it off with a little bit of gold. So black, red is next. And I'm just bringing that to the close in on the aperture here. And it makes kind of a mess. You look at it, it doesn't look very attractive <laughs> right now. It's not attractive at all. It's kind of a little messy and a little bit thick. And I'll kind of show you what I, my solution for that, for especially for a greeting card. All right. Now we're done with the, this part, the folded pieces. That's done. And I have a piece of gold uh, wrinkly origami paper that I had in my collection. But you can use the Aurora paper or any shiny foil would look really good on the inside. And I'm just going to put that on top to cover the hole that's there. And now I'm just going to take, oh, let's take my tape, a lot of it. And I'm just going to lay it right on top and just put it on there. And I could now, at this time, if I want, I can use the um, tape to just kind of lay, you know, firm that up. And I'm going to gently lift off the, using the double, the washi tape that doesn't stick to things. I love the low tack washi tape for this kind of stuff. Taking it off, and let's take a look at our finished piece. There we are. Isn't that gorgeous? I just love it. I see a little gap here, but you're not going to see it on the card. Uh, but you want to make sure your paper is a little is wide enough to cover the whole thing. I didn't fold that wide enough. Now, this is messy on one side. So what I have ready is I've gotten ready this piece of a small A4 card. And all I need to do is glue that on. And then another, just gluing it on looks great. But really, what really finished it off is I took my sewing machine and I sewed red, and then I went in gold around the edges. And the sewing machine kind of adds to the, I like texture of it. Plus, you know, it just feels quilty or whatever. So that's how you make an iris folded card. Now, anything else? So I'm going to make get rid of my mess here and really save your strips because you can make more cards. So I only I made this one, but I could make several out of the strips that I made. And really, this was one sheet each of origami paper. So I used one sheet for each color. So it doesn't take much to make a, a really enjoy making a lot of these. I just wanted to share that with you. And then one thing I want to another thing I wanted to share. The last thing, not the last, but this, you know, the pure paper that we have. We have this uh, paper that. It's colored on one side and it's fairly thick. And this, I've done jelly prints, made jelly prints. And um, I love this paper, but sometimes I find I, it's too precious because I don't want, if I find a pattern I love, I don't want to fold it up and lose it. So we are coming out with a new line of origami of uh, exclusive designs. And they're going to be papers that have been made from my art, my painted papers. And this is, these are the prototypes and I'm gonna show you how pretty these are gonna be. This is the, well, we will have three three packages and I have no idea what order these are in, but this is the paper. And I'm just so excited to show you because now you get in a pack, you'll get four sheets of each of the patterns. And these patterns are just gonna be so much fun to fold and to make, you know, use, you can use this in collage mixed media collage look at all these there's probably more but i probably used them already <laughs> i've been folding them folding up a storm here but what's great about this is that they they're gonna they're very thick a little bit thicker than the normal origami paper but they're not so thick you can't fold them into a, a crane which i think would be really fun to fold one of these into a crane and show you how magnificent this paper is since we are doing origami today so I'm going to just fold this into a crane to show you how nice this is. So it is folds perfectly square. It's printed in Japan. It's made in Japan, even though it's designed here, it is made in Japan. So you're going to get a perfect square and you're going to get paper that is designed for folding. Um, a lot of papers you might find that say origami paper, if they're not printed in Japan, if they're printed in other places, I find that they're either not perfectly square or they crack, you know, the coating cracks a little bit or the paper cracks. So I just find that the papers made in Japan or printed in Japan 
are really superior for origami. And I think that's just, just the way it is. And it's just, so this is printed in Japan. So I'm going to just make my little crane. And if you've folded a crane before, um, there's never uh, an end to the joy of folding a crane. But this paper is a lot thicker than my normal paper. So it feels like it has a lot more body. So I'm going to use my little handy bamboo folding tool that we have. Yasutomo has. This is, I love this one because it has a nice tip that you can, you can actually sand it. It's not sharp, but it has that nice pointed tip. It has a nice sort of a, almost like a knife edge, but of course it's not sharp. It makes a great scoring tool for scoring cards. That's what I use to score my uh, greeting cards. And it's just very lightweight and it's washable. If you get paint on it, you can just scrub it off. Bamboo is so, uh, so burst, so resilient, especially for water. You can get it wet and, and uh, wash it, sand it, scrub it. It, it just it it'll, it'll with it withstand a lot of abuse. <laughs> so I am going to just show you this because I just love it. Crane folded, and sometimes I like folding cranes. Not only it just relaxing for me, and then once you know the fold, and you don't have to look at a diagram, it's just a really good activity for keeping your fingers nimble, your brain. Uh, clear, you know, it just helps to focus. And I can do this while I'm talking because I've been doing it for so long, but it takes a long time to memorize the folds. So but once you have them, then it's just in your, it's in your uh, wiring. <laughs> I think this is definitely in my wiring. Okay, I'm going to finish this crane and show you how gorgeous it looks with the new painted papers, which can be used for so many things other than paper folding. But it is fantastic because you don't see paper cranes that look this, you know, it just looks elegant. It kind of adds, it just adds an artistic flair to it. And I'm just going to finish this off. And here's the little head. And there we go. There's the crane. Now I could put this on a card if I wanted to keep it flat and just fold this wing down and then glue it down. But I like to just, just open this up. I take it by the bottom and I'll open it up and just open the wings and it gives that beautiful three-dimensional look and look how pretty that is. I could do a little writing on that, a little poem. You can write inside the wings. That's another great activity to do. So I really wish that I could talk to you all and I, um, I'm hope, I hope that these cards and this has all inspired you, whoops, something just fell, um, to create with your origami models and make greeting cards. And I wanted to mention that if you are like me and you make a lot of greeting cards and you don't have enough people, friends, family to send them to, um, if you start to amass a collection of cards, you can send your cards to a place called Cards for Kindness. And Cards for Kindness is an organization that actually finds people that are, you know, like hospitals, um, um, troops, you know, different organizations that are looking for cards for comfort for for knowing that you know they're not alone and you can send your cards to them and then they send them out to recipients and i think it's a fantastic way to share your love of creating and you know without having to hoard all your cards <laughs> um, you can you can do that so cards for kindness look them up and i've actually sent cards over to them and it, it's just very rewarding to know that your cards are going to go out to, uh, re to people who need them. And one thing I wanted to mention too, is if you wanted to take, make coordinating envelopes, which I got to share with that with you, is um, with this card, I made a coordinating, I just put that little bit of, of the origami paper onto to the card. You can take it, you can even do it a card liner. If you just take a piece and stick it in and then just make a card liner or just a little strip of it. And that kind of makes it go together like as a kind of a coordinated card. You can put it on the front also. So it's just little ideas. <laughs> and I am going to, I think we're good. I'm hoping that everybody has had a good time today. And I, I will take, once I hang up from this, once I uh, um, 
Let's see if I can try one more time. Oh, swipe left, it says. Oh, there you go. I can see you now. Oh, my gosh. Oh, everybody. So swanky. Julie says it's swanky. Julie, um, the iris folding. Yes, Julie Crouch. Kitty, thank you. So, and I'm seeing everybody now. Oh, my. Okay, Joyce is here. And we've got Melinda. So, yes. Yeah, so, thank you, Melinda. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to read your comments real quick. Uh, hmm. Let's see, I, Mashi paper. Oh, yeah, somebody got some Mashi paper. Hi, Lori, you're late. Well, <laughs> um, I didn't know you were late. And Virginia is watching from Alabama. And Jane says the coat is so cute. So, I just want to say oh, hi to Lynn. And Lynn Truck is my uh, neighbor in Phoenix, and she's just a nice lady. And Julie, oh great, Paul's here. Now I know how to do this. Of course, I wait till the end of this, the show, but <laughs> at least I now I could see. And if, any, if I've missed anybody, I'm gonna try to keep checking out the comments. And if there's any questions, now I can see. Yes, Kitty, yes, you can do things with your origami scraps <laughs> or any scraps. You can do this with your with this kind of folding look would look gorgeous just with mixed media papers you know that you've got little edge little end pieces this would look so great and diane oh hi from oregon yes oregon oh i wish i was there <laughs> i'm in arizona diane look it's hot um but so oh, anybody have any questions now that you're now that i see you <laughs> um because I've got a couple minutes, well, 15 minutes, but I don't think I'll, oh, my jelly roll or printed. So Julie, jelly roll printed origami, jelly roll. Which one's that? <laughs> jelly roll. Uh, Wanda, yes. I'm so glad I can finally see the comments. And, and I know that I wasn't just talking into a cave, <laughs> that you're all here. And thank you for your support and that you're here. And I'm glad you showed up. And Melinda, thank you. Thanks. Um, so next time, two weeks from now, we'll be, hopefully we'll have Phoebe with us and in the comments, put down your requests. What would you like to see? Um, I'm trying to do things to, you know, to inspire you with Yasutomo products. Um, we can't really, don't have time for a full class, but you know, something that just gets your spark, you know, gets you going. Right. So think about if you go through the catalog, go online, if you, unless you have a catalog at home and look at some products that you may think, oh, I don't know how to use that. Or I'd like to learn more about that. Let me know, you know, write it down in the comments and I'll take a look. And that's how we got this for today's class, by the way, or today's demo is, was inspired by Lynn Trock's comment that she wanted origami on cards. And that's what we're doing. So I'd like, make sure you type in your requests because you will uh, they will be granted so wanda wants to know how to paint bamboo oh that would be fun oh so oh my goodness i'm gonna read julie's comment julie okay all right so julie the con the papers that were that are these papers they they are copied in from my painted papers but they are going to be turned into origami paper that yasutomo is going to the offering, which I think is so in incredible. And there'll be three packs to start. We're going to have three packs launching in the spring and more coming after that. So it's going to be a series. And so the first three have been ordered. They're on, I'm not sure they're on the water yet, but they're on their way. And I, I think I mentioned that they will be ready in January. They'll be in stock in January. The names of these, I don't, uh, there's names. So if you want to just call these the painted paper series, uh, Yasutomo will know, but you'll see them, we'll market these, we'll talk about these as they're becoming available. I'll make sure you all know, because you'll see them in my Instagram, you'll see them uh, around a lot, because these are just such pretty papers, and you're gonna have fun making collages with them. Um, you're gonna have fun making folded things with them. Yeah, and the original of this one, you can see, I love the way the printer did this. This is the original. I'm going to show you, find it somewhere. You can see what's coming. These are not print, these are not yet uh, out yet, but you can see how beautiful a job. I can find it. I know it was in the stack. I saw it. I know it. <laughs> You'll see that. There it is. Nope, that's not it either. I thought I saw it there. Anyway, nope. <laughs> but this is the originals. These are the actual 
pieces that are uh, painted. And this is the copies and they where the printed from Japan. They're way better than any copy I could try to make. Because my, my copies don't look this vibrant. So these are going to be nice and vibrant, um, just like the originals. The only thing they won't have is the metallic. If there's any metallic, those get those don't show up. But otherwise, yeah, they, it's beautiful. So so just stay tuned and you'll know the names shortly. There's some funny names, but and they'll have a SKU number as well. And yeah, so I'm hoping that you have let's see anybody else oh yes karen i am actually overdue for a visit in oregon i don't know where you are in oregon but i do have family in bend and in tualatin so um i am due very soon i keep there's so many times i've got to go up there but you know things happen and i i get delayed but i do plan to go up there soon so um coming to a town here i'll bring my origami wherever i go to so that is our demo for today and any like I please I'm encouraging you the people that are here you're going to guide what is going to happen two weeks from now when we have our next Facebook live so I hope you join us and uh, I look forward to reading in your comments and we will pick and if you don't get picked the first time uh, we keep the comments so, you're, so your request will be granted one way or the other unless I can't do it for some reason but you know, like if you ask me to paint a, a building or something or Mona Lisa, well, maybe the Mona Lisa, but anyway. All right, everybody have a really wonderful Friday and a great weekend. And wherever you are, stay safe, stay warm, stay dry, stay cool, whatever the weather might be. And uh, happy Labor Day, happy uh, long holiday, and we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.